What's up, y'all? I'm Andy Story with Wild Lumens, and today I'm going to go over one of the most amazing products out there for the carnivore diet, or any diet for that matter, and that's the Le Creuset Enameled Cast Iron Skillet. That's right, I forked over some major cheddar to purchase this thing, but I think in the long run, it's totally worth it. It's one of the most least toxic skillets you can buy on the market. Let's dive on in. This recent purchase cost almost $200, but as you will see, this is a very high quality skillet and Le Creuset is one of the best in the business. And we're talking about their whole entire cookware division. Now this skillet is not light. It's definitely uh, a heavier cast iron, but I think you're going to see that this thing is super high quality and the enamel looks really really nice and it even comes with a sticker saying it's made in france the company's been around for over a hundred years and the cool thing is from what i understand and i've cooked with these in the past my brother has a set is that they are pretty good with the non-stick situation the only key and what they recommend is that you cook at lower to medium range heats one thing that i should mention is that these handles get extremely hot and you can burn your Yourself if you're not paying attention that's why I would highly recommend getting their little handle condom which is uh, made of silicone that just goes on the on the handle and then this way you don't have to worry about burning yourself and it's easy to clean it just comes off uh, whenever you're ready to clean one of the reasons that prompted me to buy this is obviously the health reasons I've seen some documentaries on Teflon coatings and how bad they are one of them comes to mind which I saw about two years ago and that was called the devil we know and this basically documented the DuPont Teflon chemical plant that was on a river and it got everybody in the town sick uh, with cancer and other diseases and turned into a big lawsuit. So go check that out. Another movie worth checking out is with Mark Ruffalo or whatever his name is. And I totally forgot, but I'll put it up in the uh, video right now. I didn't see it, but I heard that was good as well. But back to our cookware. As you can see, this is an older piece of uh, cookware and it's some kind of a Teflon coating and it's starting to get some scratches and the scratches is what you really don't want. That's what starts to leach over time and over time, if you think about it, how much you're eating or using these pans, especially when you're on a carnivore diet, when you're constantly cooking meat, you're going to be getting some chemicals in your system. And I just read The Cancer Code by Dr. Jason Fung. And one of the takeaways I, I got from that book is that cancer essentially forms when you have constant chronic sublethal, sublethal damage caused by some exterior source like chemicals, radiation, inflammation over time but before we get to the review portion of this video i just want to mention if you are new to the carnivore diet or the ancestral diet i would say focus on your diet right now and then over time or after the ad adaptation period or when you have enough money saved then go out and get that cookware if you have the money now by all means do it we've got a bunch of links below to purchase this particular uh, Le Creuset a skillet so you can use that and plus if you do use that link it helps us out we get a small commission for referring business to them one other thing is if you guys are digging this channel, go ahead and hit that like button now. I really appreciate it. it. Let's us know we're doing something cool. And now to the review portion of this video. What I'm gonna do just so you guys can kind of see how this pan works is do three different carnivore diet recipes, the most basic of them all and probably the most used. One of which is I'm gonna cook a steak. I'm gonna do a skillet seared steak and then I'll have some butter in there. And then the other two uh, ways I'm gonna use to cook is cooking a hamburger and then some eggs. And we just kinda of wanna see how much stickage we get in the skillet. Now, after using Teflon or similar products in the past, you know that the non-stick features of those are incredible, but the downfall is the chemical aspect or the potential chemical aspect. To reiterate, cooking steak, hamburger, and then some eggs. 
These are only going to be cooked in animal products. I have some rendered tallow that I made, so I'll be using that to, uh, to cook with. And if you guys need some tallow, I highly suggest, or if you're not interested in making your own rendered tallow, I would suggest going out and getting some epic beef tallow. It's a great grass-fed brand. And then, of course, my favorite salt is Redmond Sea Salt. And this company is amazing. Their salt is coming from Utah. There's an ancient seabed that they're sourcing it from, and you don't have to worry about getting microplastics in your salt. One other way to keep the chemicals out of your diet. And one thing I should mention is that they do give our viewers a 10 or 15% off discount. I think one of the two. Uh, if you use the coupon code WILD at checkout. So be sure to take advantage of that. And they also have electrolytes and other products. One thing I should mention about this Le Creuset, even though it has a heavy price tag, this is something that is gonna last forever. It comes with a lifetime guarantee. And if you do use the cheaper pans, you do know that over time they scratch and they get worse and worse and you end up buying, I don't know, maybe 10 of these in your lifetime. Whereas this, this is gonna last a long, long time. In fact, I'll be able to give this to my kids and then they'll be able to give it to their kids and it's gonna turn into a family heirloom. All right, guys, we're ready to dig into this steak. I just cooked it in a little bit of beef tallow and then cooked each side for about three to four minutes. And that usually gives me a good medium rare uh, temperature on the meat. And then at the end, I added some butter and basted it in butter and then I let it sit on this plate for about three to four minutes and put more butter on it and just let that butter go ahead and melt away. And now this steak is about to melt in my mouth. So let's get a little piece going, see what we have. So we have a medium rare, which is my preferred way to eat. That steak came out perfect. So tasty, cooked evenly throughout. That's one of the benefits of using this cookware is a lot of people say it cooks evenly. I'm really satisfied. All right, you guys, here is the pan after cooking the steak. Now let's move on to the eggs. Actually, guys, I'm gonna start cooking with the hamburger. I'm gonna do a quick little hamburger taste test, see how the pan reacts. And then after that, I'll do the eggs. All right, our hamburger is finished. Once again, cooked it for about, I don't know, three minutes on each side, just enough. So I'm gonna dig on in and see what it tastes like. I panned into the pan, I panned into the skillet, and you guys can kind of see how much residue was left. I think it's gonna be an easy cleanup. I'm not concerned with it. The burger tastes good. I'm still sold on the skillet. Now, let's see what happens when we cook some eggs. Are the eggs gonna stick? or not, is it gonna be a more difficult cleanup? I kind of have an idea, but I'm gonna cook them on a lower heat, and uh, I'm told that that's the best way to cook eggs on this type of skillet so that they don't stick too much. We'll be back in a second. And finally, our eggs are done. I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick little bite. I already know they're gonna taste fine. They cooked perfectly. I, like I was saying before, I cooked it on a really low heat, not really low, but in between low and medium. And that seemed to do the trick. I had preheated the skillet for uh, a couple more minutes. It was already warm from the hamburger, but I let it warm up again. It should be good. It's a good over easy egg. It's hard to mess that up. The pan itself has a little bit of stickage, which you can see right now. I'm gonna go wash it now that it's cooling down and be right back and let you know how easy it was to wash it. All I did was let it soak for about, I don't know, three minutes just to try and get some of the crustiness of the eggs uh, up and easier to wash off. And for the most part, I washed most of it off. There's a little bit of residue that was left behind that I didn't notice when I was in the sink, but I'm noticing it now. And it's definitely not a perfect nonstick like some Teflon that you've been used to in the past. It does require a little bit of elbow grease and a little bit of water soaking, and you're not gonna wanna use anything abrasive on this. So I used a basic, uh, super cheap sponge and just started to scrub it somewhat. What I'll do is I'll go back to the dish, uh, I'll go back to the sink and wash it a little bit better, but it's really not that as bad as I thought it was gonna be, especially having crusty egg residue all over this thing. I think with a little practice, I'll be able to get a little better and know uh, where I'm at, but 
All in all, it's really not that big of a deal as far as cleanup goes. And I just had a steak, a hamburger, and eggs all in this skillet. And I'm satisfied with how they cooked. I'm satisfied with how easy it is to clean up. And I think you'll be satisfied if you pick this up from the link below. So if you're looking to invest in cookware, this is definitely two thumbs up from me, a carnivore diet eater. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I'm off to go make some more content and I'll see you there.